Conduction through hollow and composite spheres. So heat conduction through hollow and composite spheres. Uh, so first of all, uh, till now what we have done, we have done on in slab. We have done through the composite cylinder. Now we are talking about composite sphere or the hollow sphere uh, in the beginning. Then we go on uh, at the uh, layers uh, to make it composite. Okay. So here you can see, and now the resistance value will change. Till now what we have done uh, for the slab. We have taken RTH is L by KA. I am just recapping it. And for the cylinder, for the cylinder, it was RTH is equals to 2 pi KL. Sorry, uh, it was uh, it was actually LN R2 by R1 divided by 2 pi KL. And now we will talk about this thing. Okay. So for the sphere, the resistance is RTH is R2 minus R1 divided by 4 pi k, it is 4 pi k R1 R2, okay. So this P is basically pi, okay, you can have like PI, it's pi, okay. So 4 pi k R1 R2, we will actually derive it as, as we have already derived for this lab and for the cylinder. So we will do the justice. Uh, we'll do the same justice to this particular guy. So let's talk about it. Let's talk about the derivation for this. Okay. So here you are. Area through which the heat is transmitted is definitely you know the surface area of the sphere is basically four pi r square. Okay. So Q is equals to minus k four pi r square dt by dr. Again, there is no dx. Uh, likewise, the cylinder it is having dr because it's uh, the element having radius. So the thickness will be dr. So rearranging and integrating and we all know that dr is an integral operator here and dt is the integral operator here. So take dr here and r square is the variable. So r square uh, down under and dt will be alone. Okay. So here it is and integrate this, integrate this. Okay. So if you integrate it along with r2 and r1 and t2 and t1, so you will get this. It's a simple integration with the limits. Okay, so once you get it, it will be 1 by R2 minus 1 by R1 and it is 4 pi k T2 minus T1. You just need to rearrange. You need to rearrange in the format delta T by RTH will be Q. So here it is delta T. Okay, here is the Q. So what is remaining? This will come down under. So it will be 4 pi k R1 R2. So RTH as I have already mentioned in the first slide. So it is. Uh, it is like R2 minus R1 divided by 4 pi k R1 R2. So now, from now onwards, this particular formula you need to remember. Okay. So there is no need to, uh, you know, uh, there is no need to mug up all these. Okay. Uh, so after practicing hard, after practicing, you know, so many numericals, you will automatically, it will automatically get into your mind. So no need to mug this up. Never mug uh, such kind of, uh, you know. A numerical or such kind of values or such kind of formulae uh, in your mind because you will always get confused and try to deduce if uh, uh, means first of all try to practice uh, the derivations uh, uh, you know uh, for as many times as possible try to deduce it if you are confused in the examination try to deduce this formula it is hardly three to four lines okay so it is very simple so let's go ahead now now let's come to the numerical okay so a spherical thin walled a spherical thin walled metallic container is used to store liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees celsius the container has a diameter of 0 0.5 meters and is covered with an evacuated reflective insulation compound of silica powder okay insulation okay the insulation is 25 mm thick and its outer layer is exposed to air at 27 degrees Celsius, full stop. The convective heat transfer coefficient on outer surface is 20 watts per meter square, okay, degree Celsius, 20 watts per meter square degree Celsius, full stop. Latent heat of evaporation of nitrogen is 2 into 10 to the power 5 joules per kilogram and the density of nitrogen is 804 kilograms per meter cube. And uh, thermal conductivity of silica powder is also given. So it is 0 0.0017 watts per meter degree Celsius. Find out the rate of heat transfer and rate of nitrogen boil off. Okay. So what is given here? Given here is the temperature here. 
okay it is t1 at 196 degree celsius okay where is t1 t1 is the internal temperature t2 t2 is what here it is written uh, t2 is 27 degree celsius is exposed to air so t2 is here is the ambient temperature so t2 is 27 degree celsius okay the internal radius okay the diameter half half of the diameter okay and then you add on the thickness so you will have like r2 so this is this very simple till now and this is the insulation insulation's k value has been given means it's the conductivity that's been given okay now the h the ho it's 20 watts per meter square degree celsius and hfg of n2 is hfg means the latent uh, it's the latent heat of uh, vaporization is this okay the density of nitrogen just uh, just a minute so it is latent heat of evaporation right so it's a latent heat of evaporation and the density of nitrogen is 804 kg per meter cube and the thermal conductivity is also given here okay so the rate of heat transfer now now you see the resistance has changed since we are talking about a sphere here we are talking about a sphere it's written spherical thin wall so you need to no means it will just come into your mind if you have practiced a lot so it will just come into your mind that what kind of formula what which formula you need to use so here you will you will be using sphere so this and this is convective resistance okay uh, convective resistance is pretty much clear so this is the sphere now you have all the values you have this temperature temperature and everything you have okay you have everything so just calculate okay the negative sign indicates that the heat flows in okay now why the heat is flowing in because outside is 20 outside is 25 degree celsius outside is 27 degree celsius and the inside is a whopping minus 196 degree celsius so definitely you know what will happen okay so it's minus sign now you know uh, from your class 9th science uh, from your uh, whatever you have studied there it will be used uh, you will be using it here you know the latent heat latent heat means the hidden heat uh, where at the same temperature the phase changes okay so from your class 9th science uh, book okay you might have studied like q is equals to ml or q is equals to mhfg and this hfg is basically hg minus hf okay so this is all you have done uh, in your class 9 then you have studied it in class 10th and so on as a science student and then you have also studied this particular equation the latent heat equation in thermodynamics and so on okay so I won't be discussing this much so here if you need to calculate the mass flow rate uh, the mass flow rate of nitrogen when when your HFG is given means the latent heat of evaporation is given so this is the formula Q is here okay just apply that q there and you will get the value of mass flow rate of nitrogen okay simple now let's come to the next numerical the next numerical says determine the rate of heat flow through a spherical boiler wall which is 2 meters in diameter and 2 centimeters thick k is equals to 58 watts per meter kelvin the outside surface of boiler wall is covered with asbestos is covered with asbestos k is equal to 0 0.116 watts per meter kelvin 5 mm thick full stop the temperature of outer surface and that of fluid inside are 50 degrees celsius and 300 degrees celsius respectively full stop the inner film resistance is 0 0.0023 kelvin per watts okay so what do you need to find out what do you need to find out is uh, the temperature okay determine the rate of heat flow through a spherical boiler wall so heat uh, uh, you need to find out the Q uh, through a spherical wall so since it is spherical here you need to transfer the heat across it so you need to use the resistance formula for a sphere okay so let's talk about here so again the, res uh, the radii okay second radii just adding on the thickness okay the thermal conductivity is given here okay thermal conductivity the second thermal conductivity is given here then again the third radius after the insulation thickness being added okay so now it is q is equals to h1 a1 ti minus t1 as heat flows from fluid to inner surface by convection okay so isme kya hoga now what will happen here this is 
Newton's law of convection. So, if we talk about as per the resistance, so you know this is the inner film resistance. Okay? Q is equal to T i minus T 1 divided by 1 by H a. And I have already discussed uh, with you several times that the resistance for convective heat transfer is basically 1 by H a. Okay? So, just how you calculate it. Okay? So, this is the numerical, this is the numerical. So, this is the K, this is the insulation K, this is steel K, this is the temperature here, this is R1, R2, R3 and the internal temperature is 300 degrees Celsius, this is the internal convection coefficient is also given. Okay? So, here you go. Since the external convective coefficient is not given in this numerical, so therefore, there is no H O by A O, there is no H O by A O. So, you just have to remember, uh, whatever value is given, whatever parameters are given in the numerical, you just need to use that. If one of the convective coefficient is not given, you will not get panicked and you will not try to, you know, assume some values. Just use whatever is given in the numerical, okay? So, here it is. Just by the simple formula, this is the, uh, this is the conductive resistance of a sphere, okay, with the insulation. Now, with the convection, okay? So, just put all the values here. You have all the values here and just calculate the value of Q, okay? So, it's pretty simple. 